good morning. Let's stand and sing uh, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We'll do the first and last. Can you help us up with a prayer? Father, we are thankful for this Lord's Day. Every Lord's Day reminds us of it, but especially this one now. We pray for this day around the world that people would slow down and think of the importance of today. We ask thy blessing on the Sunday school as well as the morning service. And wherever thy word is proclaimed, give glory to thyself. Work in hearts, save souls. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right, we'll go over birthdays and anniversaries. And for birthdays, Asher has a birthday on Saturday. Did they come downstairs yet? They may still be upstairs, so I'll have to get him when they come down. Any other birthdays or anniversaries that we didn't get in the bulletin? Any spiritual birthdays? All right, we'll move right on to our next song, uh, Christ First. <clears throat> Christ first in my life, to Him be all the glory, Christ first in my life, yes this shall be my story, for as I live each day a new Christ first in everything I do, Christ first in my life, Christ first, Christ first, amen, let the redeemed the Lord. Anyone have a praise or a testimony? Yes, sir. Our daughter, Friday, had a stroke. She uh, went in Friday morning. She woke up Saturday in the hospital. And since then, she's had the good care of her wonderful recovery. Uh, tests and all that are ongoing. But uh, we're still sending some prayers for your daughter, Scott. Mm hmm Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Another? Mm -hmm. Another? No, no. Oh, yep. Anyone else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyone else? Oh. 
Praise the Lord for dishwashers. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Yes. Mm-hmm. That, that are filled in and the Bible says are not that a that a lie fell that from that people mm-hmm. that that's when the rapture takes place. Mm-hmm. That, that a lie fell that people. Yep. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Being over in the cemetery this morning and looking at all the graves outside of here, and I always think that there's some that are buried and mm-hmm. some are planted. Mm-hmm. Christians are planted. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Anyone else? I'm good. All right. Well, before we sing uh, into my class, Asher has a birthday on Saturday, so we need to sing to him. stand up and sing into my class and we'll be dismissed. Into my class, into my class, come into my class, Lord Jesus, come in this hour, come in with power, come into class, Lord Jesus. You're dismissed.
yes. Uh huh. Oh, good. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So hurry up on the coffee over there. And uh, we're going to get going. I want you all to notice just how cute Henry is, especially in comparison to Mason. I'm like, wow. Yeah. All right. Good to see everybody. You know, uh, Thomas said, uh, what, what did you say? That, he's a, that we serve a risen Savior or praise the Lord that he's risen? Something along that line. And I just thought, that, that's everything. That, that's why we gather every Sunday and every Wednesday and why we serve him and why we're child, the children of God. If he be not risen, we are of all men most miserable, the Bible says. Uh, but he is risen, praise the Lord. So uh, praise God for that. Um, Brother Prane's going to uh, preach Sunday school. He's standing up here pushing me out of the way, so I'm going to let him get in. So <laughs> you pray for him as he preaches. I appreciate you all being here. I normally have longer lessons, so I watch clocks. Clocks are my enemy. But let me start by asking this question. How many think Jesus died on Friday? How many think he died on Wednesday? How many don't think? <laughs> Okay, all right, good, good, good. Well, we're going to look at some of the considerations. I ran this by the pastor, and I said, I don't want to upset anybody's apple cart, and this is not a doctrinal separation issue, okay? All right, because you've got good people that hold to Friday, ones that hold to Wednesday, but I want us to look at considerations in the Scriptures themselves to try to determine with consistency what day Jesus died, okay? And we're going to go from the plain passages that are very clear to maybe some of the ones that aren't so clear that you got to kind of try to fit things in, all right? So having said that, let's uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee again for the resurrection of the Lord. We ask that Thou wouldst help us this day, Lord, as we look into Thy Word. Lord, this would be used by Thee to just get each of us to study the Bible closely as well as realize that the Bible is true in every aspect. We pray that Thou wouldst get glory to Thyself now. We will praise Thee. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a verse in the Bible that I'm just going to apply here today in Romans 14.5. The context there is about things that people disagree on. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And the thing that we can all agree on, on all of this, is found in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. So Christ is that Passover lamb, all right? So I'd like you to open your Bibles this morning, and I'm going to have you turn really to two main passages. One, first one is Luke chapter 24, please. Luke 24. And that was the uh, passage that pastor assigned to me this morning at the sunrise service. But I want us to look at three verses in Luke 24. Look at verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher. All right, look at verse 13. And behold, two of them, this is the ones on the road to Emmaus, and behold, two of them went that same day, okay, the same day, to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. Look at verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. So this verse, these verses here give us time. Okay. This is the third day since these things were done. This is Sunday. That's the third day. Saturday 
would be the second day. Friday would be the first day since these things were done. Thursday is crucifixion day. That's what I hold to, Thursday. I know it's not as popular as the Roman Catholic Friday, and it's not as popular as the ones who reject the three days, three nights that you can't fit in Friday with, and they take Wednesday. So let's go back to Exodus chapter 12 now, please. So coming from behind the scene, from this is the third day since these things happened, we're getting to a Thursday. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12 now, and look what the Bible says. Verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, in the Old Testament it's called Abib, A. B I B of Eve, and then it later changed to Nisan when they came back from the Babylonian captivity. But Nisan and Aviv, they're the same. He says, uh, verse 3 Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, you'll notice it doesn't say the lamb's too little for the house. <laughs> he says here, if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make you count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year ye shall take it out of the sheep from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. So that Passover lamb here was separated out on Nisan 10. Okay, that's what it just said. Okay, that's verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, say, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. It was to be kept and offered on the fourteenth day of that month. Verses 5 and 6, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now one pastor that I know very well, he's a Wednesday guy, and I'm, they're good guys on all positions, okay? There's good guys. But he says, well, the word until means up to but not including. This is how he tries to get Wednesday, okay? And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote him here. He says here, uh, he, he quotes Matthew 27, 63, 64, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he's yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He has risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. The phrase, I'm quoting, directly quoting, the phrase, until the third day, must obviously mean until the completion of the time period that Jesus was talking about concerning his resurrection, Matthew 12, 40. It must of necessity refer to the general scope of time consisting of three days. Well, if you're going to be consistent with his interpretation, if you do it to until three days, then he was offered after two days, if it doesn't include that third day. Okay, but Jesus said in John 2, 19, Jesus answered and said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in hot building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. So here's the question. Does the triumphal entry fulfill the Nisan 10 occurrence? That Passover lamb separated out on Nisan 10. Does the triumphal entry fulfill that. That's the only time Jesus presented himself as prince. So it's a very important prophecy. Okay? Are we accurate to believe the triumphal entry was on a Sunday? Because we celebrate Palm Sunday, right? All right? Now this causes problems for both the Friday and the Wednesday crowd. Okay? Because you separate him out on the 10th day, if that's Sunday, that's the 10th, Monday's the 11th, Tuesday's the 12th, Wednesday's the 13th, Thursday's the 14th. So I'm coming at it from the clear passages, looking back in the Luke 
24 passage, and going forward from the Exodus 12 passage. Okay? Now we're going to look at really just some of the considerations, okay? And I'm not saying you're wrong, but I'm saying I'm right, okay? <laughs> let, every, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So in my mind, I'm right, okay? Because who wants to be wrong, okay? Who wants to be wrong, okay? It's hard. You deal with sinners all the time and try to get them to admit they're wrong. You know, you know what that's like, okay? So same here, okay? All right. I just don't want that. All right. But then some say, in or, the, the Wednesday crowd, in order to get from 9 sand 10 to 9 sand 14, they'll say, well, it wasn't a Sunday. It was the Saturday before. So they, they can get those days in there. Okay, now stop and think about that. What's on Saturday to the Jews? Shabbat, Sabbath, rest, okay? It's their Sabbath day, okay? So let me just give you examples. I don't believe that could be a Saturday at all. The Jews came up with 2,000 cubits, which is a Sabbath day's journey, which is roughly around half a mile, okay? It goes back to Joshua. Joshua chapter 3, verse 4, 5. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near to it, that ye may know the way by which ye go, for ye have not passed this way before. And then when they set the boundaries for the Levitical cities, they separated them out by 2,000 cubits. So they're making that a Sabbath day's journey. In fact, not to get too far off base here. You go to New York City today, and the police have had to step in because the Jews have all sorts of rules about Sabbath day keeping and all that. And you go into Brooklyn, Crown Heights in Brooklyn up there, and you see that they have a synagogue, a, a Sabbath day's journey every less than half a mile, Sabbath day's journey. And you can't go outside and all that stuff, so they have connecting things and all that stuff. And they rope off where you can drive and you can't. I mean, police had to step in after a while, but that's, that's how Jews do it, okay? But anyway, Jesus came from Bethphage, okay? That's Bethphage, most people pronounce it that, but it's Bethphage. Uh, near Bethany to Jerusalem via the Mount of Olives. The distance was 3.4 miles via the shortest route. Uh, way more than a Sabbath day's journey. So, Jesus came up through from Jericho up there, Bethany, before the triumphal entry. There came up. I mean, before, um, when, when he got there, and it was 15 and a half miles, eight, nine hour work, a uh, walk from 800 feet below sea level to Jerusalem at 3,300 feet above. After the triumphal entry, Mark 11, 11 states, and now the eventide was come, making me think, me think, Jesus came all the way from Jericho. The religious leaders, now here's why I think that, because the religious leaders blasted Jesus for breaking the Sabbath days. He did that there with, uh, when he healed the man with the withered arm in Mark 3 when he healed the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, when the disciples were eating corn on the Sabbath in Matthew chapter 12, but they didn't say anything about Jesus' triumphal entry breaking a Sabbath. So I do not believe it was the Sabbath day. At all. And what did the people do? They what? Cut down the palms and strawed the place where he came, right? That's working. That's working. So no, it was not a Saturday. The Nisan 10, to me, was that time when Jesus presented himself officially as the prince of Israel, the triumphal entry. Okay? David Jeremiah, who's still alive, he's 80, whatever he is, three years old now. David Jeremiah, following Alvin McLean, proves to the very day, he says, Jesus' triumphal entry from Daniel 9.25. And I, I'm not going to get too technical on you here, but I want you to know how people think and, and how they reason, Okay? Know therefore, this is Daniel 9, 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, that's the city, not rebuild the temple, but rebuild Jerusalem, unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself." So that prophecy really is very important there. In fact, that's the passage of scripture I use when I deal with Jewish people, I deal with um, students, uh, Jewish students. Where is this commandment found? Well, it's in Nehemiah chapter 2, okay? Nehemiah 2 talks about, came to pass in Nisan, in the 20th year, Artaxerxes the king. Well, Artaxerxes started reigning in 465 B.C. 
So it would be 445 B.C. when he issued this decree, and most conservative commentaries take it that way, okay? So 69 weeks, 69 seven sevens, they, it's years, 483 years from the decree made in 445. If one converts the year, I'm just giving this to you, you don't have to try to remember it. If one converts the years into days, 360 days, the way the Jews register their, their lunar calendar, they go by, then 483 years would equal 173,880 days. You didn't even know that. David Jeremiah calculates these days from Nisan 1, 445, which that year would have been March 14, and comes up with April 6, A.D. 32, which is a Sunday for the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday, and would work perfectly. It fit perfectly, except Nehemiah 2 doesn't say Nisan 1. It says in the month of Nisan. So even though this is close, I don't think you can nail it down like he says uh, he can do. But we do know that on Nisan 14, the Passover lamb was offered on this day. Okay? And I'm going to try in the next 16 minutes or so to answer some of the things. These are the feasts of the Lord. Leviticus 23 with the feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, a holy assembly, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. On the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day, that's the first day of the feast, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. That's a Sabbath that they made there. It's a high day Sabbath. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day, as a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. So at the beginning of this feast there was a Sabbath, and at the end of this feast was a Sabbath. They're high day Sabbaths. Okay, we'll get to that. So, what about, and this is where most people come to Friday. They say, well, the crucifixion was the day before the Sabbath. Okay? It says that. I mean, I've talked with, I've talked with your brother-in-law about that out in Kansas. Okay, he said, well, it's Friday because it was the day before the Sabbath. Okay? And a lot of people take that. Mark 15, 42. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Now here's a key verse. John 19, 30 and 31. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and for that uh, they might be taken away. Now, what were the high Sabbaths? There were seven of them. Okay? Not like the weekly Sabbath that they observed, but these were special Sabbaths, high day Sabbaths they were called. And that's what this was. It was the day before the, the high day Sabbath, the Passover, and then Feast of First Fruits starts. Okay? The high day Sabbath, while the regular occurrence uh, weekly, there were seven annual high Sabbath days, which did not necessarily fall on Friday, Saturday. These high day Sabbaths are related to the annual feasts in Leviticus 23. For example, the first and last days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They had to have those. That was springtime. There were two of those. Then you had Pentecost, Shavuot. Pentecost, that's in the summer. That's the third one. The Day of Trumpets, uh, Yom Teruah sometimes, or Rosh Hashanah. You most of you hear that. The head, the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah. said the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkoth. Okay? And they added an extra feast day at the end of all the feasts just to honor all of them. So those were the, there were two high day Sabbaths in the spring, one in the summer and four in the fall. Okay. There's a fella, Ted Montgomery is his name, and I came across this searching this stuff out. And he does a lot of work with in understanding Jewish things. And understand, folks, let me just throw this out here. Uh, the Bible is a very Jewish book. Even the New Testament is very Jewish. And it sure helps with a lot of Gentile interpretations if you know the Jewish background to a lot of things here, okay? But here, let me read you what Ted Montgomery says. He says, In more ancient times, priests went outside at the beginning of the year for a few nights to determine the time of the new moon. They decided when it was Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, the start of Tishri 1. 
and they established the days of the other important days of the year. One of those days was Aviv or Abib 14, on which there always was and still is a full moon. Those priests long ago did not follow the more modern rabbinic rules that Rosh Hashanah and certain other important days could not fall on certain days of the week. Furthermore, new moons and full moons at any time of the year can occur on any day of the week. So I do not see any restriction preventing the full moon and Jesus' crucifixion during the Holy Week from taking place on a Thursday. Well, here, this is someone out that studies his Jewish stuff all the time coming to that same conclusion. Josephus says that the year Jesus died, there were 256,500 lambs sacrificed. That's a lot. But they said if you, take a, if you took 144 priests and they sacrificed one every 10 seconds, it could be done in five hours. And everyone was supposed to bring one of these, okay? The Jews were beginning to equate the beginning of unleavened bread with the day of Passover. In Matthew 26, 2, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Mark 14, 1, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. Now, have I lost all of you through all this stuff here? Probably. You say, okay, that's, that's not my purpose. But I'm just, I'm, I'll, for sake of time, I'm going to skip over a lot of the details here. Okay. But I'm just showing that the, to the Jews, that Feast of Unleavened Bread was very important to them because they had that high day Sabbath, then they had Sabbath day, then the first day of the week. Okay? And, and, and uh, you can see that. Mark 14, 1. After two days was the Feast of the Passover and Unleavened Bread, and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day lest there be an uproar of the people. Well, right there, that answers to me that it can't, couldn't be Friday because they weren't, they weren't going to do it on that feast day. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover, that whole thing, because the one started right after the Passover. But again, they said not on the feast day. So here, chronologically, you have the anointing of the feet of Jesus with alabaster box of ointment. Then Matthew 26, 17, on the first day of the the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou prepare for us to eat the Passover? And they said, On the first day of Unleavened Bread, when they killed the Passover, the disciples said, Where wilt thou that you prepare to eat the Passover? Okay. I'm trying to get through here. All right. We'll do this way. John 13, and this is, this is, I'm doing this chronologically. John 13, 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, that part of that supper being ended, the devil having now put in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Matthew 26, 31, then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. Okay, so he's eating that Passover meal, okay, which would be on our time, Wednesday night was the Passover meal. Because they took him by night, they, they broke all, the, the Sanhedrin had 22 laws about grabbing hold of somebody, and they broke every one of them against Jesus. It was an illegal trial, they came and arrested him after this, this night you'll be, this night, he says. And they came and they took him overnight. And uh, had the illegal trials and all this. It's for another, it's for another time. But anyway, um, then Jesus said, John 17, 1, These words spake Jesus, lift up his eyes to heaven, said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son may glorify me. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray. Yonder. And then they come and they arrest him. John 18, 1. When Jesus has spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where was a garden into the which he entered. The disciples, Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches. See, it's that night. It's that night. And weapons. Matthew 26, 55, in that same hour said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. Then one of the false witnesses said, Well, this fellow said I'll destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So here we have Peter's denial. 
And then when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes, the whole council, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And as soon as it was day, Luke 22, the elders of the people and chief priests and scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? You tell us. And Matthew 27 says, Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release one of the people, a prisoner. Okay, and we all know who they uh, chose. And then uh, John 19, 14, And it was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour. Now John uses Roman time. The Jews... And the Romans measure time differently. Jews, it starts at 6 o'clock at night till 6 o'clock the next night. The evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning were the second day. That's how Jews do it. John, he measures things in Roman time. So here when he says it's the sixth hour, that's 6 a.m. They had had him all night long with all the... Uh, accusations and all that other stuff and they bring him before the uh, authorities there and then you um, see in Matthew 27 now from the sixth hour this is Jewish time now this is Jewish time sixth hour there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour so the sixth hour for the Jews was 12 noon from noon until three in the afternoon you had midnight at midday right okay and at three o'clock he was Offered himself up as that evening sacrifice, as that Passover sacrifice. All right? This time. Okay? Jesus died 3 p.m. as that Passover lamb. Mark 15. Now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, that's that high day Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, Honorable Counsel, came and, took the, and asked for the uh, body. So, we've got the easy passages, third day since, 10th and 14th day over here. You have to go through the verses here chronologically to find out what, what the timing is here. But that day of preparation was before that Sabbath. That was a high day Sabbath, according to John. Gospel, a high day Sabbath, okay? And you have these phrases. You have the phrases talking about the numbering of the days, okay? Three days and three nights. As Jonas was three days and three nights in a whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. No way Friday fits that, folks. No way. None. None. Absolute impossibility. So you have the phrase, three days and three nights. You have the phrase, in three days. Jesus said that, John 2.19. He answered, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple building, wilt thou raise it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Another phrase, it says, is within three days. Mark 14, 57, 58, And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. The phrase that's used the most is the third day. Okay, Jesus uses it. Eight times. I, I'll, just, I'll just give you the one here. Matthew 16, 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And he says that eight different times. But then you have other ones referring to that same phrase. The religious leaders in Mark, I mean in Matthew 27, 64, command therefore the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come. Luke 24, 7, the angel at the tomb, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Luke 24, 21, Cleopas on the road to Emmaus. But he trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, this is the third day since these things were done. See, the third day since. Luke 24, 46, after the disciples, speaking after resurrection, he said, Thus it is written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead the third day. Acts chapter 10, verse 40, Peter said, Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. 1 Corinthians 15, 4, Paul speaking, And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to Scripture. So the third day, that phrase occurs the most of all of them. But you also have a phrase, after three days. 
Matthew 27, 63, the religious leaders saw, we, we heard that deceiver said while he was yet alive after three days. You say, well, that, that's those guys. No, Jesus used that phrase too, Mark 8, 31. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. So all these things are considerations that need to be brought into our study here, okay, folks? For the, the, Twofold purpose here this morning. One is to make sure we read the Bible carefully. And number two is to realize everything the Bible says is so. It is accurate. Okay, it is accurate. And remember the difference between the, the Jewish reckoning of time and the Gentile reckoning of time or the Roman time there. Okay, so let me finish up with this. The phrase, the first day of the week. Okay, that's important too. First day of the week. That's why we're here. The women saw where Christ was buried, came home, prepared the spices, rested the Sabbath, then came to anoint the dead body and uh, the day after that Sabbath, the first day of the week. Here it says, Luke 23. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spice and ointment, rested the Sabbath, that's singular there, Sabbath day according to the commandment. Mark 16, 1. And when that Sabbath... Uh, was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James Salome, had brought sweet spices that may come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came on the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Luke 24. Now unto the now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. So Christ arose early the first day of the week. You put all these things in with the Wednesday view, Jesus rose on Saturday, not Sunday. It doesn't fit in the Friday view. And so obviously I take the Thursday. So, Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week. The Passover commemorated the deliverance from bondage. Remember that? Had to put the blood on the lintel, the doorpost lintel there. And the Lord's going to pass over the land. Everybody had the blood. It passed over it. Commemorating deliverance from bondage. Unleavened bread commemorated the sinlessness there. Okay, no leaven in it. Unleavened bread. The Messiah was sinless and his body did not decay in the grave. First fruits celebrated the day from the Sabbath. The Passover week was a guarantee that the rest of the crop would be harvested. That's us, folks. <laughs> it proclaimed that death could not hold its prey and that we are, will one day be resurrected. So in uh, conclusion, you were waiting for that. In conclusion, the things to consider is the time element. Christ was to be in the tomb three days, three nights, after three days, in three days, on the third day. Remember the Jews and the Gentiles reckon time differently. Okay? See, so you understand it. Okay? You have the separating out of the Passover lamb on the tenth day. You have the differences of the Sabbath, high day Sabbath or regular Sabbath. You have the phrase, the first day of the week. And you have that consideration where I started the word since. Okay, so here's my questions. Could a Friday crucifixion fulfill all the considerations above? Correct answer, no. Could a Wednesday crucifixion fulfill all of these things? Answer, no. Could a Thursday one fulfill all of these? Yes, it can. Okay? Taking all these timing factors, separating a Passover lamb, the position with the least problems is to hold to a Thursday crucifixion. Even though not all agree on the particular day of crucifixion, we do agree on the important thing. Exodus chapter 12 again. If you look at that, and we'll finish up with that. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. It had to be a lamb. A lamb. According to the house of your fathers, a lamb for house. Verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb. It was a lamb. But it had to be the lamb, okay? Let him and his neighbor next unto him, unto his house, take according to the number of your souls, every man according to the eating, make it to count. Look at verse 5. Your lamb. There's a lamb, 
There's the lamb. Is he your lamb? That's what is important. We may disagree on the days. I'm not breaking fellowship with you, and I hope you don't break fellowship with me. Okay? Just make sure that we all agree that Christ is that Passover lamb. The lamb. Your lamb. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the truth in thy word. Lord, I know I've gone fast. I know I've muddled things up here. But Lord, I pray that thou wouldst help us each one to just determine we're going to read the Bible carefully and realize that it is so accurate. We pray that thou wouldst undertake through all that is done. Bless the pastor, guide the next service. We pray you may have some visitors. We pray, Lord, as this time of year, as Brother, I think, Kerry brought up the other night, this time of year, Christmas and Easter, Christers, as some people call them, they only show up then. Father, we pray that somebody would show up in a church today and the gospel would be proclaimed, the resurrection be proclaimed, and there would be new life brought into that sinful soul's heart. Get glory to thyself, and we will praise thee. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.